Welcome and thank you for joining us to our webinar today, Turning TV Insights into Measurable Actions. Today we'll plan to cover some background on the history of TV measurement, the new rules of how we're changing the TV measurement game, and then we'll dive into some steps that Nest has taken as we've partnered with them on measuring their television. We'll end with some questions from the audience that you can submit in the Hangouts on Air chat box. Our presenters today are myself, Dave Barney, Lead Product Manager for Adometry's TV Attribution. We have Harry Tonnenbaum, who leads the analytics team with Nest, which covers sales, marketing, product support, and quality. Yep. And Alex Bain, who runs the marketing analytics on Harry's team, driving level and efficacy of Nest marketing spend. So what does TV measurement look like today? It's important for us to talk about where the evolution of measurement has taken us over the past few years. And uh, really, TV traditionally has been, TV measurement has been about what aired and who saw it. It's been measured in GRPs, impressions, reach frequency. But it's not really been about the effectiveness of those TV ads. As set-top boxes have come online, we now have a lot more precision um, on those GRPs and impressions. Now we can get minute-by-minute -minute estimates of the audience sizes. And, and we've added a lot of precision, but the measurement continues to remain about what aired and how many people saw it, and not so much about the effectiveness of those ads. Meanwhile, digital attribution or digital marketing in the, over the last decade has really grown in that there's a lot of advanced measurement tools for measuring digital channels with a lot of precision. Yet still in 2013, with all of these advanced digital tools, linear TV, which lags behind in measurement, still dominates nearly $70 billion of, of linear TV spend in the United States alone in 2013. And now over the last couple of years with the rise of the smartphones and the second screen, in those moments that matter, after someone sees a TV ad that they're interested in, um, they have the ability to respond. TV is no longer just a one-way advertising medium, but we can now reach an engaged audience. Nearly 80% of people watching TV are engaging with that second screen while watching TV. And so now the measurement story starts to change. We can measure the brand lift, the response. People are searching for a product or visiting a website in response to a TV ad. And so now we start to add to that measurement. It's not just about what was aired, but now we can start to see what the response is, what the engagement is. And today, that's what we do in our TV attribution product. And as we look forward where the future takes us, it's, I think it's really bringing our digital attribution uh, measurement tools our, uh, and our TV attribution together, those bottoms-up tools, and then traditional methods like marketing mix modeling that are really top-down approaches and bringing those into a single system for a holistic view of all of our marketing channels, both online and offline. And so these are the new rules of TV measurement. It's no longer about GRPs and impressions and reach and frequency, but it's about the capture, it's about the response that we capture. So we're capturing that response by activity type. How many people are searching versus visiting a website? We're capturing that response by device type. Is it on the, their smartphone or their tablet, or is it on a laptop or a desktop? And we can start to measure the performance by network or TV program or day part or the creative length, all kinds of, the, of dimensions. And so now let's look at these five tips. Now that we've seen kind of a top line of how these new metrics are measured, let's look at five tips for improving TV measurement. And the first one is really to connect TV data to digital data. And this is where TV attribution modeling comes in. and This is how it works. We have a TV ad that airs, and we have an example here of a Nest TV ad. This airs on TV, and the people that are interested in, who, who, you know, in these moments that matter, this ad resonates with them. They go, wow, this is, I want, really want to learn more about this product or this company. They're going to come online, and they're going to search for the product or search for the brand or go directly to the Nest website. And that, in and of itself, provides us a signal that we can use to measure. Now we can see what the performance of spots and creatives and the networks and day parts are based on that response. But not only that, for those people that come to the website, we now have, we can now tie them into that digital journey to conversion. They may have other touch points with our brand with display ads or paid search ads or other vi website visits, but now we can tie that TV-driven website visit into the journey 
and get a more holistic view of how TV and other digital channels are working together. Now how the modeling works is we'll take that digital signal and in this case on, on the chart you see this is actual data, Google search data, minute by minute search data for a US brand. And we look at the, that digital activity over time. We then apply machine learning and statistical modeling to determine what the baseline is. Essentially, we look at based on the time of the day and the day of the week and the, and the current trend that happens, what would this traffic look like in the absence of offline marketing? And so this delta between the observed data and this baseline is what we would attribute to offline marketing. The next step is we overlay the TV plan. And in this particular case, these spikes in search activity that you see correlate within seconds of when this brand ran national TV ads. And so now that we can correlate that lift to the individual airings, we now have a lot of very granular insights on what the impact of the individual airings is. So that sounds simple, but it's harder than it looks. There's a lot that goes into to building that model. Like I mentioned on the baseline estimation, we need to account for behaviors different on weekdays versus weekends or evening time versus daytime. We also, you know, different so there's the time of day, the day of the week, and weekend, weekday effects that we have to account for. And there's different behavior types. People respond differently in the daytime versus the evening time. Is it a lean back or a lean forward TV experience? And so we have to make sure that we've modeled that properly. And then a, a common problem is overlapping spots. That's when we have spots that air on two different networks around the same time. And so we may measure the combined lift of those two spots. But how do we confidently distribute that lift between the two spots and say which one drove more of that response. And then there's the lag effects. Um, some ads or even some day parts and some audiences are going to respond more immediately and some that, that response is going to be spread out more over time. So we have to make sure we account for all of that. And then there's local. What's happening at the local level? When we're running national campaigns and we want to understand how Dallas versus New York is performing, for example, we would look down at the DMA level at the spots that are airing, the, D the DMA specific spots. So we want to account for both the national effect as well as the local effect. Now if we can solve these problems well, then we can leverage the, this digital response to improve the TV effectiveness. And you'll hear next from our partner Nest who kicked off one of our first studies using this innovative technique. And we're going to cover real examples in just a minute, but you can see some of the benefits that can happen when we can connect this, their TV to the digital signal. We can, you know, there's a lot of benefits to be able to optimize and understand what's happening on TV better and really validate that's TV working, especially for someone who's new to TV, just getting an understanding that it, that it works at all. And then really complement those traditional marketing modeling techniques, you know, marketing mix modeling with really detailed, granular, actionable insights. Yeah, so uh, back in 2014 at Nest, we could see our growth tra trajectory. And uh, it was our first opportunity to do television advertising, uh, but it represented a significant shift in the way uh, we uh, parceled out our, our media. Uh, because of the significance of the spend, we wanted to make sure we really understood what we were getting in return and if we were doing it well. So working with odometry was really special. I mean, it was special for us because traditionally you couldn't do this unless you had multiple years of TV history to do marketing mix modeling. And even on top of that, the data would have to be really clean, organized, pumped into a model that's customized and a lot of work done there. For us, as a first-time advertiser, and honestly, as an advertiser who you know, hadn't, hadn't been thinking for years and years that we were going to be at a point where we'd be doing marketing mix modeling, we're able to just basically sit down, plug into the Adometry product, and be able to have insights come out in near real time. There was a day when um, the first data started coming, started coming back from the campaign. I remember we were sitting there, and it was just a, it was kind of like a head slapper moment where, it, is this real? Like, is this real that we can see which one of these ads had better response? And not just response, but cost per response, which was really fantastic to have that apples to apples metric. So, and this was mentioned in the video a little bit, but we had six spots running on a bunch of different networks and very quickly you could understand at the spot level, you know, which one is performing better. 
And it's not just the spot level, but it's also the network level. So you could sort of understand which spot network pairs were performing better, or even at the, you know, at the show level. And, and again, you can take the product and make it as granular as you need and dive as deep as you need. You can get even to the day part level, to the geo level. For us, there were insights that were really, really clear and trends that were really, really clear that came out at a very high level. But being able to drill and learn more about the customer and learn more about the campaign was great. So once you've sat there and um, digested the fact and sort of moved your mindset to the fact that you can actually compare ads apples to apples in near real time, it's time to get to work on optimization. And it's optimization in flight in the campaign, but it's also optimization across channels. So what was interesting is we were also running these spots on YouTube. And you would think, OK, we've got winners and we've got losers, or we've got ones that are performing better or worse based on different audiences. It was really interesting for us to be able to start to parcel out the differences in efficacy for ads across the different channels. YouTube, for example, and for a true view view, to make it past that three seconds and have someone watch an ad, a learning we had is that the first, those first seconds in the ad really matter a lot. Uh, and just because an ad is incredibly successful on YouTube doesn't necessarily mean it, was, it would be incredibly successful on TV. So that was a big learning. And we were able to, again, optimize in real time with digital, but also optimize relatively close to real time offline. Uh, so in terms of uh, the next step is to uh, target and complement. Uh, so it, it, it used to be the way a television would work. You would sort of pick your audience and then try to find them on television. What Adometry has made possible is uh, you do your best uh, in, in the old way, but then you can also see your audience sort of revealed back to you through which um, uh, networks, programs, uh, you know, day parts uh, performed best. So for us, for example, we were really surprised at some of the um, kind of pairs of network and program, day part, et cetera, um, where we got, we saw a big lift, you know, relative to what we were spending. Um, so we actually learned uh, not just about which uh, of our commercials was performing best, but we, we learned about our audience and, and where we can find them in the future. Uh, so now not only can we go back to the places that worked best, but we can look for other sort of look-alike, um, you know, network program combinations. Uh, so additionally, one of the things that we saw was that um, we had a 3x lift in searches on mobile relative to desktop, and that wasn't <laughs> the way our spend was aligned uh, through our SEM. So you know, in future television campaigns, what we can do is we can pair a you know boosted SEM um, aligned with our television spend. Uh, additionally, um, we saw that there was um, a lift in brand specific terms versus generic. Uh, so we can align our, our bidding that way. We can also use that as a KPI. Uh, part of the point of television advertising is to get people excited about your product in, uh, you know, specifically as opposed to the, the category more broadly. So we can use that ratio of uh, brand to generic as a KPI for future campaigns. And, and this, that was cool, too. Everybody's talked about second screen, and you know, there's, there's sort of soft things that are floated around. People are searching on their phones mm -hmm. when they're watching your ad. For us, it was right there. And, and, it, and it was a real thing and a tangible thing for us. And I would have liked to say that we, could, we would have, in the absence of that data, been able to shift our digital spend as effectively as we did. But what it really took was some hard data and some good metrics to help us really optimize there. So sort of the last, the last step in this process we'll talk about is driving the business. And at the end of the day, uh, as someone who works in analytics or someone who someone who's working in marketing, um, your goal is to drive the business and make things move. Um, from an analytical standpoint, you need accountability and you need clear metrics and you need transparency. And these are things that, while there are some ways to get there with television advertising, uh, we had never heard of anything or seen anything like adometry. And injecting that kind of visibility and that transparency and some clear metrics into the organization really helped us move. Yeah, so for example, uh, some of the metrics that we saw, they were consistent with our intuition. Um, but even when something isn't necessarily a blinding insight, it can be very powerful to quantify it. Uh, so one example is that um, the response rate of our uh, campaign sort of decayed across time. And I think anyone would assume that that's happening even in the absence of data. But you don't know if it's going down 10%, 50%, et cetera. And, um, 
across campaigns, you might like to be able to see, um, can we create content that's so compelling that we actually change the decay rate? So being able to quantify something, even if it's consistent with your intuition, uh, creates a new layer of accountability and, and you know, uh, performance management. And, and these, are, these are not new muscles. These muscles exist in marketing and analytics organizations everywhere, and we're doing it a lot with yeah. digital. Uh, and it's, it's a good feeling to sort of work those muscles out on television and be able to talk about cost per the same way we talk about cost per, or to talk about decay the same way we talk about decay, or to talk about switching in different creatives to understand what's working better against specific target yeah. segments. So that's really um, powerful, and thanks to the Adometry team for making that happen. Great, thanks, Harry and Alex. That was really insightful. That was uh, an overview of the benefits and usages of TV attribution, the way Nest applied them. And so just to recap some of the things we talked about was first connecting TV data to digital data, which is what the odometry systems <coughs> enables you to do. Then the ability to compare, um, whether it's creatives or if you're comparing across networks or whatever, but to be able to compare the performance of various dimensions. And then using that comparison to optimize, to optimize your TV for your creative message or for whatever KPI you're trying to drive. And then complementing TV with digital and targeting to your best audience, understanding the audiences that are responding better and, and how to reach them. And then finally, driving accountability, which is you know, very important in all marketing. And traditionally, because of the way TV measurement has been done, has been difficult with TV, and, or at least not timely. And so uh, with that, let's open up to questions from the audience to ask a question type your questions into the chat box under the hangouts on air presentation window and we'll try to do our best to answer all the questions if we're not able to get to all of them feel free to visit our website to learn more information so the first question here is how are you measuring digital activity are these branded searches or other signals so it's a good question the answer is really a combination of of both searches and website traffic and then within searches it, it's branded searches and category searches so we work with the advertiser on determining what are the categories of searches we want and you know with Nest there's there's brand and products and then there's category searches and then also tying in your website traffic so we, we, we it's a combination of both of those really next question is how does this complement my existing marketing mix modeling so, as mentioned a little bit earlier, marketing mix modeling is kind of a top-down approach. It's very strategic and long-term, and this is a bottoms-up approach of measuring TV. And it's, it's really intended to be more tactical. It's more fine-grained and detailed. And so I think they really work together, and sort of, as I mentioned, the, where the future is taking us, that's our marketing mix modeling product and our TV attribution product, they are converging. They're already in the same interface and we're really converging those together so that you can get both the tactical and the strategic view of, of TV performance. Next question is, what about measuring social media's response on TV? So we've, in, in the years that we've been looking at this, we've actually seen fairly little social response to TV ads. Typically what you see um, in terms of the social response to television is centered around the content. So there's a lot of social activity around TV shows, actors and actresses, and you know what the latest episode was about, but not so much the ad. And if you think about it, you're watching TV, you might be engaging with social media as you're watching a program, but then it switches to a TV ad and you find a product that's really compelling. Now, you're, now you want to learn more about the product, so that's when you switch over to searching or visiting the website to learn more. And that's really what the data has been telling us. And so we don't really see a strong social media signal in terms of measuring TV ads. Next question, how much historical data was, we, was required for this analysis to be effective for Nest? All right, question for the Nest side. Um, none. I, I think no history was required. I mean, we brought uh, whatever knowledge we had about who we thought our target segments were, ideas about response rates, ideas about which creatives would perform better than others, but we had never run television before, so we didn't have a historical comp in that way. We were running the media on YouTube, so there was that comparison, but really the 
Adometry product and methodology is about a live comparison. Now, certainly, if you do it year over year over year, you're going to hope that you're getting better at advertising and you're getting better at targeting and you're getting better at tuning creative. But uh, for us to do this, we didn't really have to have to have anything historical. I mean, there is um, there is some. Uh, some prep required to sort of tag the ads in the same way that you would tag uh, a display ad, um, sort of a, a pixel for TV, where you can track and understand when impressions happen and who they're uh, who they're who is impressed upon. But that that wasn't uh, wasn't really tough at all. Yeah, it's kind of the beauty of the system. It's the, it's capturing those moments that matter. So if you start TV today, we can start seeing what the response to your TV ads are today. Yep. All right. Next question. How was this work received within the marketing team at Nest? Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, I guess that's an accountability question. Uh, accountability is a two-sided coin. Um, so you want to be able to tell people where they can improve. And, and generally speaking, you know, good marketers are always trying to do their job better. Uh, but you also want to be able to tell people, hey, you, know, you, you knocked it out of the park uh, with this spot. Um, or, you know, work with your agency and say it was a great idea to go into this network and program. Um, and so, you know, finding out what, what did work and what was positive, people are always thrilled to get that pat on the back. Uh, so it's partly about how you position it and then give people notice that you're going to have um, these, uh, the capability to measure things this way so that they can, um, you know, anticipate that and, and uh, optimize in advance. Yeah, yeah, I would say just like any an collaboration with the analytics side or the marketing side or however it's set up at your company, it's important to sit down with everybody before you go into the campaign and talk about this new methodology uh, and, and get aligned on what the goals of it are um, and, and get aligned on, on how it can help and how it can help drive the business. And for us, once everybody was aligned and understood, oh, okay, uh, now I hear where you're coming from. Now I understand how this is similar to what we do with other types of media. Uh, it, it was great to have that transparency and alignment. Next question is, I, I can see how Nest found this useful because they are newer to TV advertising and have a digital savvy consumer. What about traditional brands? It's a good question. I think actually kind of a little bit related to the last question is how is this work received? As you can tell, Nest was really excited about this type of data and the insights it gave them. We see the same thing with traditional advertisers who've been doing TV for a long time. In fact, TV practitioners who've been, who've been trying to measure the effectiveness of TV if they've been doing that for a long time, they appreciate the value of these added insights even more. And so I think that, you know, even traditional brands who are heavy TV advertisers and have, have applied, you know, econometrics and marketing mix modeling type approaches to TV measurement in the past, they love this kind of insight because they're struggling with the same types of questions. They may have a pretty good idea of what the ROI of TV is because they've been doing it for so long, but they still lack a lot of ability to understand which networks and day parts and which creative combinations are really driving the most response for them. And so I think it's, you know, maybe, maybe a slightly different use of the data, but the more experience you have with TV, the, the more you kind of appreciate these added insights. All right, next question is, can all of this, can all of this work if, can all of this work if you do not have Google Analytics? It's a good question. So uh, yes, it can. In fact, you know, look, one of the f signals that we're using is search, right? That applies to all advertisers regardless of what you're using to track your website. Um, but even if you're not using Google Analytics, we have a direct integration with Google Analytics, obviously, that can, that can improve it. But if you're using other systems, we, can, we support an export. You can give us a CSV export of your website data to do that. Um, or you can fall back onto the search signals, which are equally compelling and, and valuable. Okay, next question is, do advertisers need to give you a schedule of when TV ads are expected to run? So this is a good question. Um, the, basically, Adometry doesn't have to just, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, but Adometry doesn't have to look at, say, a search signal in real time. So you could do this after the fact, you know, if you wanted to. So let's say you didn't have your schedule all, all primped and done. T's crossed and I's dotted, you could sort of do this after the fact. But for us, what made it especially effective was to have the schedule up front, 
have the ads tagged in a way that we were able to pass it through the odometry model and then back to us yeah. relatively quickly so we could impact things. But yeah, especially if you're advertising on any kind of live programming, you wouldn't know in advance to the minute, to the second, when those spots are going to run. Uh, so you just need to have them tagged appropriately so that you can see that after the fact. Yeah, but um, so I, I guess to answer the question directly, no. Uh, and and in, in, in some cases, it's going to be impossible ahead of time to have minute or second level granularity of when an ad is going mm -hmm. to run. But the sooner that data or those inputs can move into the model, the sooner you can start getting actionable insights back out. Yeah, and I would just add to that that we have a partnership with, with uh, Rentrack who can provide us the, the spot level data for uh, U.S. advertisers on the national level. And so we're, we can support both the client provided data or we can use the Rentrack data. And, and I think that really helps with minimizing the overhead uh, of what's required of the client. All right. Nest ran national TV campaign, but what about local DMA campaigns? Is it possible to measure this at the DMA level? So yes, in fact, we just recently launched uh, DMA-specific uh, features in the product. Um, it works very much the same way as national, where if we're looking at, for example, the Los Angeles DMA, we would just look at the, the, the airings that took place there, and then we're just we're isolating the response signal to that geo. So we might just look at the Google searches that happen in that region or the website visits that happen in that region in response to the TV ads. And where I think it becomes really powerful is the blend between the national and the regional. And you can see how the national ads are performing, but you can really then get an idea, is, is it the East Coast or the West Coast or the South or the Midwest that's really resonating with your message? Next question, are there situations where this approach doesn't work? I think that they're, generally speaking, for 99% of TV advertisers, I would say the answer is no. But there are some a few extreme cases. For example, I think like with the Super Bowl, right? That's just a unique TV time where you have the largest TV audience in the world watching the same show at that moment. And, you know, I don't know that you necessarily need this type of tool. I mean, you can be looking at your own analytics and see your ad aired and, and <laughs> see what the impact is. Yeah. And then there's also um, there's the always on advertiser that's that's um, that has high TV volume that is that literally every second of every day there's an ad airing on some network somewhere, and but the volume of that is actually really high. I would say there's only two or three advertisers in the United States that fall into that category where the the volume of TV is simply so high that it becomes difficult to distinguish. Um, the TV driven signal from just the general baseline for with with really just a couple of exceptions this this would work for pretty much every TV advertiser now the next question is what's the biggest difference in how you measured your TV aka what would you have used to measure success of TV if you hadn't had the TV attribution uh, yeah, I mean, I think some of the basic metrics that we use to measure kind of marketing health uh, all the time anyway. So uh, certainly um, sales, uh, you know, our, uh, if sales had gone up sort of more than um, what our, you know, best ability to kind of predict what they would have been, um, we would have used that. We would have used um, any sort of awareness signals. Uh, so, you know, uh, Google Trends, surveys, um, brand research. Uh, I think we would have used traffic to the website. Um, conversion rates there. So, you know, we, we still did do all those things, but that wouldn't have helped us know day part, program, spot level. Uh, and so we wouldn't have really understood how to get better in the future. Um, and so that's what this made possible. And, and so we're actually getting better as marketers as a result of working with Odometry. Yeah, after, after the campaign, we, you know, go, go on a little bit of a road show through the company to talk about efficacy, talk about what we learned and like any deck on marketing analytics, there has to be a funnel in the deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, it's sort of uh, awareness, intent, conversion, or you want to put familiarity, relevance in there. And I think generally we would have talked a lot about awareness and brand health, and then we would have sort of jumped down to conversion and sales lift. But the beauty, and, and we said this, we said, usually we wouldn't have a whole section on intent on television, but... With the Dometry, now we do. We've got a whole, we've got, you know, half of what we're going to talk about is this intent level, and we're going to talk about comparisons ad by ad and network by network, and that was really impactful. That's awesome. Good, good questions 
folks out there. Keep them coming. Yeah, so another question. Are you able to pick up lag effects one hour after the ad airs? And how long does the effect of an ad last in terms of traffic being driven to the website? We have noticed surges up to three to four minutes only. So it's a really good question. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot that goes into this. So the, the window of time that we're monitoring is not something that's hard-coded or fixed. It's something that we model. And for some advertisers, it can be a fairly short window, and for some, it's a little bit longer. We also look at those moments that matter in the, in the minutes that are immediately following airing. And then we have an, another model that looks at the impact over the next several hours. So the short answer is yes, we look at the, the impact after the time. And kind of just one comment for whoever submitted the question on, you notice surges in the first three to four minutes only. I think that if we're just doing some, some basic look at the, at the time series, the visual impact of the TV ads sometimes may only last those first five to 10 minutes, or in this case, three to four minutes. Um, that's where it becomes really important in, in establishing that baseline and, and, and in the modeling techniques to understand because as you imagine, there's this impact with an exponential decay and as you get into the tail, it can be really hard to distinguish that TV lift from just regular signal noise. And so you have to be uh, really smart about how you do that so that you can, so that you can capture more than just that obvious like three to four minute head, but get more of the long-term impact. Next question is, does Odometry have the ability to track radio the same way that you're doing this for television? And the answer is yes. So the system, if you imagine the way that we're modeling this as we described it today, it's all about measuring broadcast media. An ad that reaches a large audience of people at the exact same moment and then modeling their response. So it applies to TV and to radio. And when we first started looking at radio several years ago, and we've been doing this in TV and we thought, you know, this, this should work for radio. We anticipated to see, we, we weren't sure if it would work just because we, we anticipated most radio advertising happens in the car. How likely are people to respond, you know, while they're driving the car? And I don't know if this is a good commentary on our society or not, but the answer is like people do respond immediately to radio <laughs> very similarly to the way they do in TV. And, I'm a, and, and most of it's happening on mobile, which sort of supports that it's happening in a car. Hopefully so, it's the passenger. Yeah. <laughs> but most of it's search, and so I'm hoping that it's all Google Voice search, and so at least, <laughs> at least they can keep their eyes on the road. But no, the answer is that, yeah, it works for radio. We've seen a lot of success um, doing this in radio as well. I would say the majority of our customers, their primary interest is in television. That just tends to be a larger marketing channel. But we do have some that are um, also looking at radio and works the same. Kind of makes me think uh, <laughs> pro product uh, product recommendations during the webinar is a good one, right? Yeah. Um, kind of <laughs> makes me wonder if you could probably also do it with if you were sponsoring a segment of a show or you were mentioned during a show or if you were tagged on a show. Right. So I, I think it's, it's really sort of media agnostic and almost even vehicle agnostic inside the media. Even just a mention of a brand on a TV show could be tagged and measured there. Yeah, that's, that's true. And for some of our advertisers that do some of those sponsorships, we actually, in our early days, we were doing this for an advertiser, and we kept seeing a spike that had the same shape and behavior of a TV-driven spike. And it was a March Madness advertiser, and it was happening the same time every day. And I, you know, we kept saying, God, are you we, we wondered if we had an error in the airings data, we're missing airings, we kept going back and we could see something was happening and it turned out they had a halftime sponsorship and it was plus or minus 10 minutes at the same time every day. And so it was basically like an organic mention, not, not a traditional TV ad, but it was sort of an ad. And so we do account for those things as well and we're working on systems to automatically detect through you know, closed caption text and other sources when there's organic mentions of brands and what the impact is on search and website. Good suggestion, Harry. <laughs> Next question, uh, do you take network reach into account? What happens when two commercials run at the same time and one is in a much smaller network? Yeah, so I, I talked about the overlapping networks earlier, but I didn't really get into the details of how we solve that problem. And it is very important to take network reach into account. That's one of the things that we get from our partnership with Rentrack and one of the things that we, um, that we require from the client if we're not using the Rentrack data, if we're using client-provided data. And that's the audience size. And that's, 
that's not only important for overlapping spots, but that's important just for understanding the effectiveness of a network. I mean, if you just looked at the raw volume and said CBS drove 10 times as many searches as uh, ESPN, or you know, maybe that's not a good example, the cooking channel, and you say, oh, therefore, CBS is 10 times more effective, you may have had 20 times the volume on CBS. And so it turns out the cooking channel is actually more efficient. You just had a lower volume. So volume is absolutely an essential component to making this work and for providing meaningful reports. Yeah, so volume, response rate, and cost. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for us, uh, you know, there, there are real, there's gravity around budgets. And, and uh, being able to really get into a space where you're talking about cost per TV response is, is, is a refreshing thing. I mean, again, you have to weigh that with reach because these two things might not always come together, yeah. but, it, but it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, really nice addition to sort of the quiver of metrics that exist. Yeah. All right, so I think we're at about our last question. Uh, what's the future value for you, I'm assuming for Nest, for using this? What's next? Uh, I guess I would uh, I would say there's kind of three immediate responses that we had after doing this. Um, so one was we were so happy about the output um, and the learnings that we got from Adometry that we thought kind of how can we grow this relationship. So we obviously want to do more of the TV attribution, but Adometry also has the marketing mix modeling, and so we we started to pursue you know how can we do more of that um, and drive more of our marketing uh, you know out of uh, this sort of data driven approach. Um, another thing was. Uh, there were learnings um, about uh, programming. There were learnings about our creative um, from that work, and we want to fold that into future campaigns. Uh, so, you know, what worked and what didn't work. We want to do more of the good, less of the bad. Uh, and then I think uh, the, the last thing, you know, in terms of what's next is accountability. So now that we have these benchmarks for how our own um, media performed, we want to see if we can do even better. Uh, so we're going to try to, to beat all those metrics that came out. Yeah, great. Thank you. Those were, like Harry said, those were really great questions. Thank you for submitting those. Um, if there's any additional questions, feel free to visit us on our website. Thank you for joining us today. And you can go to adometry.com slash TV-attribution to learn more. Thank you. Thank you.